So there you go. Angela, do you want to take over? My my throat is uh, I really I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that was amazing. Oh, is anyone else like like so happy? I am so happy. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we've done that all in one room before. I I I love that. Uh yeah, I did too. Uh, I, I think that was really, really good. Actually, there was a, a moment in the main town hall on Thursday where someone had, uh, accidentally clicked the uh, close or the breakout rooms in the after town hall and everyone came together and I was torn. Do I go back into the breakout room or do I hang around here for a little bit? It was actually kind of a bit of fun. So it was good to see everyone uh, in the room there and uh, just working through things. So that was really great. But yeah. I see that we're joined by the Conma team. Hi. Hello. Hello, guys. Now, Hi, Angela. We do. You guys, was it you that I saw somewhere in terms of uh, wanting to present? Was it you guys that uh, wanted to present? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, so how do people feel about if we just give them a couple of minutes to, to run through because they weren't on the schedule or anything else like that? Everyone keen, keen for that? Right, why don't you do it? Uh, throw, throw the uh, link to your uh, proposal in the chat and we'll give you two minutes to, to uh, uh, just present to the rest of us here. Um, but Robert, we have like seven proposals in Project Catalyst, so. Just, well, just, focus on, just focus on the overall- I can give you a very short brief about what Conma is because it's a highly integrated solution. We have some experts close to like 15 different sectors coming together, so. Go for it then, two minutes <laughs> to cover all seven. You got two minutes. Or, or probably I like, all seven can be done in like one small- No pressure. Minute. Maybe you Vina. Can, like, let me share the screen. I just want to show you one single- Maybe Vina, you can I... give a short run through through Conma at general without going too much in the proposal. Yeah, yeah, there's no screen sharing. No screen sharing. Uh, no screen sharing. No nah, screen, no screen sharing. sharing. Oh. Tell, tell <laughs> us about you guys before. Yeah, we want to see you. We are, we are here to explore the highest potential of human collaboration. It means wow, cool. Okay, there are some guys but from I'm India like, coming. Unless and until there's like no chat, right? You can't understand. Like it's it's massive. <laughs> okay, we'll go for it. So Kanma means Kama in Japanese. So Kama is an indication for next. So we don't put to, uh, we don't intend to put a full stop. So unless and until there's a Kama, we just go on. So Kama is a decentral, uh, is a decentralized autonomous organization where our tokenomics is done for 195 countries on the whole. So the organization is divided into uh, three entities. We have Kanma Global Foundation, which takes care of uh, empowering the society and protecting and restoring the environment. Then we have Kanma Labs, which is a research and development wing of Kanma. And then we have Kanma Inc, which take care of con uh, farmers of Kanma. So now we have the entire Web2 functionality already up and run running and our, our product is already validated. So we are waiting to do DCF, uh, the Decentralized Consortium Fund. But uh, it's it's good six months from now to uh, even like think of DCF. So we thought we, we would want to like just uh, get to Cardano community, validate our products with the community. So that is why we put in close to like seven proposals in uh, Catalyst. And we have like a 20 member core team and uh, 15 uh, advisory team. So yeah, that's about Convo. So what are you aiming? So we get what are you aiming to where, do? Uh, yeah. Sorry. What are you aiming to do? So out of the seven proposals we've put in, two technical proposals are for uh, our Dex, our Conma Swap, and uh, KDAO, uh, the governance protocol that we are trying to build. And uh, rest of the proposals are for getting our community better. So to build the community, we have five, and to build our uh, protocols, we have two. So you're fundamentally sort of focusing on DeFi, is that correct, or is yeah. it broader? Yeah, we have a DeFi product. Uh, it's called KSwap, Conma Swap. Okay. Cool. So we are an association with 
Emergo India for our education and development and uh, also in association with M Labs for that. Okay. Excellent. Any questions from anyone about that? Yeah, in terms of what's going on? We've got plenty of time. We've got a good 30 minutes. So yeah, but <laughs> I, have, I have a question because it's kind of interesting project and that well, in regard to many other projects presented here, it's not that you grow out or emerge from the catalyst ecosystem, right? Where are you guys coming from? So again, we are from all over the world. We have uh, Sangeet from Dubai, then half of us are from India. Then we have representation from Nigeria and Ethiopia. Then our uh, developers come from Guatemala. And the DAO itself? Sorry? The DAO itself? The DAO. Is Cardano the first experience you have in regard to blockchain ecosystems? Yeah. So we, we initially had a plan to like develop on uh, Ethereum or uh, Matic, right? Since Matic Polygon is from India. But uh, post our Cardano summit, uh, post our D, uh, Don Tapscott's DCF uh, introduction, we wanted to do DCF because we have like an in, entirely an integrated solution. So we have expertise in farming to solid waste management. So we want to like decentralize most of it. Okay. Well, thanks. Can I like uh, post a link where it, we have like uh, links to all seven proposals on Catalyst? Yeah, you can pop them in the chat if you want uh, to help people uh, have, yeah. have a look at them and stuff because there's seven proposals. And is yeah. there any dependency amongst them? In other words, if if uh, you don't get all seven, what is there issues there or you just but most of it is uh, bootstrapped as in uh, we have it running already okay. it's just for the growth we are uh, here okay you're going after growth uh, in terms of your funds cool yeah okay. so we already have our uh, virtual uh, space where all of us work it's called conmaverse where we are building the community and we work there so okay. I'll, I'll just put in a link to that as well where you can join us you can see the team working and uh, the community events. Right, happen. excellent. What I would, um, uh, well, thank, thanks for talking about that. What I would like to do, because we've got, uh, or he was in here. Oh, yeah, Tim, you are here. Tim and Andrew. Now, both of you hey. guys are interested in the no code or low code environment. So I would like you to, both of us, you guys, to explain a little bit more around the intention of that kind of idea. What, what is it? Why do we care? Uh, okay. Andrew, Tell me, you no. want to go first? Yeah, yeah, go to him. Andrew, shall I go first? So no code is uh, an idea Am I coming through fairly clearly? Yeah, that's good. So no code is an idea that um, actually is very well established in the enterprise today. And it's about lowering the barrier, the technical barrier of someone to build applications. So Gardner, which is a fairly well-known uh, person to go to or company to go for, to for stats, claims that 70% of enterprise apps will be built using no code. But for us, the really great thing is that um, more people can contribute to building products. Uh, more uh, what we call the citizen developer, which is somebody who's just passionate about what they do uh, and really eager to roll up their sleeves and do it, but doesn't necessarily come from a technical background. Previously, this guy sort of sat on the sidelines because they didn't have the background to actually start developing. But with no code, uh, this, these whole community of individuals uh, who just come with a passion can actually be contributors and help build the software. It's 
So Andrew, do, have you got any thoughts on that? Any additional things or pushback or? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we're huge fans of the no code, low code space because the real issue whenever it comes to developing um, enterprise systems or software systems that large enterprises, governments are going to use is not necessarily the initial development, but it's actually the ongoing maintenance and support of the technology. And what happens is whenever we're talking about blockchain development, we're in a scenario where we have a lot of people who are almost doing the R&D type of work. They're really interested in building out the actual underlying network and the technology. But from the other side, from the perspective of Cardano and a lot of us in terms of investors, we have a keen interest in accelerating enterprise adoption, hence the name of our project. And you accelerate enterprise adoption by ensuring that businesses are best able to implement their technology and solve their business problems in a way that includes Cardano. So you can't go into a business and consult and say, I have Cardano and now I want you to use Cardano as part of a solution to your problem. We have to solve the business problem and make it easy for them to use the underlying Cardano technology. So our solution with Jogit, and again, the basis of our proposal is that we do exactly this. Nobody in terms of a business is going to actually um, solve a business problem exclusively by building a solution on Cardano. What happens is they have a web application and they would like to use an implementation of blockchain, the specific immutability that blockchain provides to optimize their business. And in this instance, we have a platform that enables people to visually and using minimal coding, focus on making the forms, the web application needed to solve a business problem. The, the end result of this is because it's done visually and it's easy and it integrates with a wide number of systems, you end up being able to enlist people who work within the business that are otherwise not hard code developers to be a part of the process of building out the application. And throughout that process, you end up in a scenario where you have more people willing and able to build their applications on Cardano. Cool. So um, you focused a lot there on the idea of the enterprise and giving yes. tools there. What I want to do, um, and uh, Yoram, I'm going to ask you a question after this with respect to climate and um, social impact. Yeah, but um, Tim, uh, in particular, the, how does the no code sort of environment fit within the context of business to business collaboration? How do you see that as being rather useful? Well, um, it's, it's uh, I would say, almost a minimal use for it. Uh, one of the applications that we're running uh, is dealing with the fact that there's certain applications, because there's so much emphasis been put on the technology part of it, actually don't reach out to uh, the entire community. For instance, code traceability. There have been giant projects on food provenance by IBM, by Microsoft. But what these end up being is giant pipelines that go from the small farmer to uh, an agent and from the agent to an international. So that kind of technology is not available, say, to the small farmer who wants to sell to a local spot market or the local farmer who want, maybe wants to sell directly to a consumer, maybe in Europe or the US. But uh, so obviously the, the effort of actually joining one of these giant consortiums, these giant uh, food traceability pipelines is well beyond the concept of most, say small landholder farmers who, uh, you know, often didn't really even finish a high school education. So one of the things that we're doing is bringing this patterns basically 
trading them into components that can be quickly adapted to small scenarios so that we can lift and shift from uh, one, let's say one small farmer in Ghana to maybe another small farmer in Ethiopia. And there's a minimum amount of effort that needs to be developed. So no code is very, um, very well known. Let, let's say it's established now. We can't claim to be like the founders of no code. There were, in fact, one of the proposals I have under communities is let's create a basically a conference of all the no code communities or literally hundreds of thousands of no code uh, enthusiasts and dozens of different companies. So one of the proposals I have is in, rather than trying to reach in and grab this space, let's try to corroborate with all of the uh, no code world and see if we can't collaborate. And that has one of the benefits is that we don't live in these silos because one of the things no code is very good at is breaking down silos. However, we don't want to create no code silos. So I think <laughs> yeah, everything becomes silos, largely the business dimension brings silos. So my, I think, uh, yeah, one of the proposals I have under is to bring a giant conference where we can bring really all the no code providers. Mendex, which is one of the largest no code providers is already working with the uh, environment group. So, but yes, it, it, it's established now in business to business commerce. And, and there's a number of vendors in that area. Okay, Vin, Vinay, Vinay, did you, oh, um, Andrew, did you wanna respond in some way just quickly before Vinay? Yeah, I, I think uh, it, it's, a, it's a tool. So uh, we actually have Justin here, and uh, if we had had the opportunity, we could actually demo how in 15 minutes uh, you could build uh, an, an app using no code, low code. Uh, we have actually built a traceability system using Jogit that reads and writes to Cardano that will be being deployed in Ghana. And that implementation took two weeks, but that's at a simple level. At a high level, there are also solutions that are in place in uh, enterprises as complex as the US Department of Defense, as a Ministry of Finance in France. So basically, it's a tool that is up to the developer to determine whether it's going to be used in a B2B or a B2C context. That's up to the developer. Our job is to make it, and, and I'm particularly interested because I am Ganyan, uh, we'll be working with WADA at, uh, we'll actually be in Ghana at the end of February, beginning of March to run a symposia, if you will, on developing applications on Cardano uh, in a low code, no code way. But our job is basically to make it as easy as possible to solve business problems as quickly as possible. So when you adopt a no code, low code tool, it should feel more like building a website with WordPress, as opposed to having to start developing your application using HTML, PHP, and SQL to connect to the database. You want to go in one place, be able to build a complex application that is automatically mobile ready, ready to be distributed and can service business to business, business to consumer, consumer to consumer as effectively and efficiently as possible. We just provide a tool. Cool. Uh, you gave me an idea here is uh, in one of the Eastern town halls, we could do a no code, low code bake off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, th I think that would be fantastic. Yeah, like, I, I think that's a good idea. I set a, set a small problem and then each of the tools and stuff in that space can yeah. go through and work through how they have solved that particular problem. How do, how do I would love for Justin uh, even to chime in. Uh, Justin, if you're listening, because he has a lot of experience of working with this platform and working with Cardano as well. So Justin, we, if you're there, you can maybe give some insights. Yeah, I, what I'll do is, um, first of all, I, I want to put the ones that have got their hands up first. I'll oh, let of course. and Tefra and Anne uh, go through and answer their questions, and then we'll get on to you, Justin, in terms of providing some thoughts. 
Okay. Cool. Have cool. a day. So, Andrew, I have two questions for you. So, one, uh, the no code meaning, as in right now, no code is all about you drag and drop and you map everything, right? So, you mean to say that we drag and drop the modules to create smart contracts? Uh, one, one is that and the second one is it something like what uh, Cardano has the Marlowe right Marlowe is a playground where you just drag and drop as in it's a no code tool that uh, they have uh, now all these are based as in built on Haskell or Plutus uh, but when you are building it on what would it be okay so um, I, I think we, we we are coming from this from the perspective of I, I used to work for Deloitte and Touche Consulting. So you go to a company and you say, what is your problem? And we're going to build the software. Now, I know all of us here absolutely love and adore Cardano, but the reality is you're not going to a company to say, we'll build all of your technology on Plutus, Haskell, Cardano, and that will solve your problems. Existing technologies, existing companies have infrastructures that speak via API to so many different backends. So first off, we build an application. And what we have right now is a plugin of which Justin was integral in designing that plugin. And the idea of that plugin is it allows smooth integration with the Cardano blockchain. So our client application, the Jogit itself is built primarily in Java. But the idea is you are going to have things like security, things like workflows that are not going to be blockchain dependent, but you may also need integrations with other blockchains as well as Cardano. So what we provide is a platform so you can build a full stack solution and where needed, you're able to connect read and write to the Cardano blockchain by simply mapping your form fields and whatever metadata you'd like to have uh, 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 written to the blockchain, to the Cardano blockchain, it will be able to be written to the Cardano blockchain. But it is visual, the application uh, framework itself, and it's open source. So you can actually go through and look at the code of the plugin and the code of Jogit itself, but is, is primarily Java. And our idea is that you build a broader application and it integrates where needed with Cardano easily visually so my answer uh i would give a slightly different answer to that uh question so i also i spent my, my uh like 20 years working with uh bea and oracle and we had something called bpm business process management and if you go back to the bpm the the business lingo the sales lingo was exactly what it was what it is to now you'll find the same thing. You're technical, you don't have to throw over the wall to your developers, the, man, the business people. Uh, the business people can actually make changes themselves so you have greater agility. This is 20 years old. I was doing this 2008. I was, I was working with tools at Oracle and, and IBM business process management tools. They didn't work. And the reason they didn't work, they worked for some cases. They, they were a success for things like call centers, insurance processing. The reason they didn't work is because they have one interface. They're a least common denominator. So the person who uses this, and I think this is true of pretty much every um, BPM I've seen, the person who uses this has to have the business knowledge it's a little bit too much business knowledge for the developer. And it's too technical for the guy who's the business manager who actually may be struggling with uh, Word, for instance. So, so the least common denominator solution has been around for more than a decade. It's been tried in the industry. It's found its niche, but what we, what we did was say, let's build layers and let's build a layer for the developer has all the capability. And what we did, uh, because my, my background, I was at Google, I developed uh, a language that can run on any blockchain. And the idea is to 
build abstractions until you create these build, the highest level building blocks where a guy who is, let's say a farmer who wants to connect and deliver to the market. He's not going through, how do I connect to the blockchain? How do I connect to the, uh, you know, how do I do this? How do I drag? What's a for loop? What's an if else? He has high level Legos built from lower level Legos, higher level Legos that he can connect. So even if he's, you know, maybe he's, uh, let's say a farmer can find a local web developer who can understand it quickly totally abstracts everything about blockchain, everything about the complexity. And that's, that's where we're gonna have the big win. I feel that uh, a lot of the no-code tools who count it are just, they are uh, workflow management tools and they're gonna run into that limitation. And just like Wix, just like other, other no-code products, you're gonna get 90% or 80% of what you want. When you want that extra 20%, uh, you're gonna go have, have to go all the way back and build it from scratch. So um, recently we added just our experience working in Ghana, a new, a new so we have three layers, like the, the totally nerdy geek, the guy who's somewhere in between sort of, professional user and then the non-technical worker. And now we have, and now we have created, based on our experience working in Ghana, a new interface. And I don't know, Robert, would it would it be too much if I just show a, like a 30 seconds of what a new interface looks like, or that's too probably too much at this point in time. I'm gonna save it okay. for the bake-off. <laughs> so, we, I, because I, I think I, I think I, this is actually quite an interesting be, area, and could, we could go on for quite a long time. And I'm conscious, I understand yeah. that. And, so and I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will give you. I'll give you a sneak peek. It is metaverse, so you're going to actually go from these drag and drop technical wizard to actually seeing a metaverse world that is uh, that is. So, so, so what you're saying is we can phones. we can do the uh, what, what, what was that Tom Cruise film where he's sort of going grabbing things like this uh, that sort of thing? Yes. <laughs> cool. Yes. <laughs> yes. If, uh, uh, okay. Well, uh, Tefa, uh, can you uh, you've got your hand up patiently? Uh, uh, yeah. Um, I, I was actually uh, going to ask about the demonstration, Andrew. Uh, sorry, but uh, as you said, there isn't that much time, so. I was wondering if you can make a video and uh, upload it so that we can see what you have doing. Yeah, actually, we do have a full demo. We had a, a session with WADA and we demonstrate, I'm gonna find the YouTube link and I'm gonna send it to you. But we did about an hour and 12 minute demo last week with WADA where we went through the development of uh, a wallet and then we actually work through an entire traceability implementation. And uh, what is interesting is um, in, in Ghana, for instance, it, it's interesting that this room has come around to Ghana. So um, in, in Ghana, uh, my grandparents on both sides uh, were involved in the cocoa trade and my mom and dad are there right now. Uh, Tim, have you ever been to Ghana? <laughs> I actually may be there uh, in March. And maybe oh, good. Is, uh, then I will see you there 100%. I'll be seeing you there. I'll be I there at the end of February. And what you were finding is that at the farm level, um, and I think some of the other people who are here in, from Kenya or Tanzania, you'll know that um, whenever they're doing agri-food deposits, they're oftentimes, you're almost dealing with people who are more or less illiterate. Like my grandmother was illiterate and they're dealing with agri-food in terms of feature phones and paper chips. So they go to a processing center with their product and they are quite in some ways suspicious of technology. So we're in a situation where you're dealing with cocoa producers and, and agri-food producers, and they have to go through an education process to get people to even trust 
that what they're doing is going to be fully accepted yeah. in an electronic way. So our objective there is we'll be going through going through that education process, but we're still in a situation where we have to run things in tandem. And we'll be working with the local boards as well as the, uh, the, the cocoa processing companies where they themselves design the processes. They themselves design the forms in a way that the local people who are sometimes illiterate or do not have the greatest technology are still able to uh, benefit from the technology. Because uh, like I know my grandmother, she didn't even, uh, she didn't even trust the microwave. And uh, th this is my mom's mom. She produced, uh, my grandmother produced a whole bunch of university educated children, but you're dealing with an entirely different paradigm. Um, and it's really important that whatever solutions we provide fit into how they want to run their operations and not us imposing the latest and greatest bells and whistles on how we want them to run their operations because it, it just doesn't work. It's sort of like a new form of colonialism. So, so if I could ask a question, Andrew, uh, and and I this is I know you're you're founder for both the, the your own company, but I'm asking you as as the global head of sales of Joga, you must have a lot of insights on okay. how. Okay, first off, that is a lie. I am not the head of sales of Joggit. Tim, I don't know if there is a pathological problem, but this individual, Tim, and, and the proof is just go and look at our proposal page. I comment about a presentation or an update to our proposal, and this individual, and certainly for the Africans in this room, an American who has never set foot in Africa in Vietnam, exporting his technology to Africa, at every instance has said, I am the global head of sales of, at one time it was Emergo, and then now it's of Joggit. As if I should be apologetic for working in the blockchain space. It's just not true. Everything you have said is not true. Ghana has a population of 30 million people. There is Microsoft, there is Google. There's more than enough room for your metaverse Cardano no code. You don't have to post your projects and your comments on our project page. 30 million people. I'm born in Canada. Canada is huge. We have 37 million people. But somehow Tim has taken it upon himself to spread lies. And I, yes. I didn't. Okay, well, I'll hold it there. I didn't see. Uh, that's okay. It's global, whatever. Uh, all I heard. But it's just uh, not true. Right. Maybe just, uh, guys. Um, yeah. To give okay. a very I, I short second here, Tim. Tim, Tim, Tim wait really... just. Tim, wait just a second, because um, I think we are here for a certain reason, right? We want yes. to build the future. And I followed what happened on the proposal as well, and really uh, with between Andrew and Tim, and it's not a phenomenon. What we see more and more, right? we have instead of collaboration, sometimes competition. And this is definitely desired. There should always be technical competition. But guys, please keep in mind, we are in a space, we act on public spaces where the community joins and we define the spaces in which we walk. Keep the spaces in a moderate sp spirit, please. Hmm. And it, you don't have to be agree with others or whatnot, but simply just let them do their stuff. I have a very similar project as well in this funding round, for example, where I'm confronted with a huge of shitstorm where I say, but hey, okay, it's great to give critic, but please make it constructive already. Yeah, I'll please make that. it objective. Because if you have something against my idea, it's great. But tell me what you want me to make better, right? Don't come and point everything singly as shit because this helps nobody. It doesn't help the proposal. It doesn't, doesn't help us as community on idea scale. And we waste our time. Take the time and write code. Write your proposal. But don't waste the time in going aggressively against others. I think this is something we really need to keep in mind. 
we have a responsibility in the open space. I agree with that. So now um, what I wanted to do, Anne, you had your hand up, uh, but you've taken it down. Do you want to ask your question at all or are you you're okay? Yeah, I kind of got lost in translation there and I was trying to figure out what was going on and then the conversation went another way and I just got a bit confused. And so I lost my confidence a little bit there in asking a question. Um, so that's why I lowered my hand because I wasn't sure what then was transpiring, <laughs> what the undercurrents are. I didn't quite understand that. Um, I just wanted to ask whether there are cost implications to this. So what is um, this uh, Jürgen? Um, because, um, yeah, the question I wanted to ask is in an open source one, one, is, is it trying to solve the interoperability um, issue, first of all? And two, I, wasn't, I wanted to ask, is there a cost implication in terms of like licensing? Because you, you have, if you can code in HTML, you can build your own website on a free script and you're fine. But if you go to Wix.com, then you have licensing issues. So you may get one year free license to use a plugin, but then after that, there are cost implications. So this is the question, is it actually open source and free or would it have a cost implication of licensing as we go along so that one knows if they are coming in quickly to use a product, whether they'll get stuck um, in licensing issues later. Okay. I don't know whether my question is clear. Yeah, no, your question is very clear. So there are several models. First off, it is open source. So that means if you choose to set up your own infrastructure to host everything, you are free to do so and run it as an open source application. However, in most instances, whenever you try to set up a node for blockchain, a node for your client side development, you try and set up all the technology stack, there are fees associated. In our case, we have a range of per developer or per user fees. The highest per developer per user fee for uh, somebody who wants to have access to the enterprise system on the cloud, where basically you would log into Jogit and develop. If you are not using the free community open source version, Okay, so there's free community open source. The highest package, the enterprise package per developer is 120 US dollars per year. The same cost as a Spotify or a Dropbox account. All right, now beyond that, the reason why it has to be open source is oftentimes if you're making an application for a government, they want to be certain um, and, and we've actually run into this. They want to be certain that they will have access to all the code. And they, in many instances, they decide that, look, you have to deploy it on premise at our location. So whenever we're dealing, uh, let's say we were to build a system for a ministry of education and it was going to be very, very sizable, then in that particular instance, there would be a different type of licensing agreement and contracting agreement because the government would want it run on their servers, on premise, in country. And for something like that, I don't know, the CEO is not here, but that basically represents the three different tiers. One is open source, one is cloud, one is on-prem large enterprise. So a lot of these, like, there are lots of different uh, node code platforms and things like that. And uh, then obviously some of them will be, have various different sort of approaches to, to uh, their licensing and those sort of things that are going on. Some will be open source and completely freely available. What I want to do is basically, because I do, Tim, I do actually want to uh, stop, uh, close the room down pretty shortly. I'd like to go to bed. Okay. And I was going to actually ask, uh, because Yoram's had his hand up, I just wanted Yoram to have the, the final question. And of course, I wasn't actually going to, I was going to ask him a question or two, but I'm not going to now, uh, because we can save it for later. So Yoram, what, what's your question? 
First of all, thank you, Felix and Robert, for bringing uh, this discussion and some sanity into that as well and putting us in the right track. Um, yeah, I mean, it's fascinating and I think it's very important. I, I worked a lot on the uh, agricultural supply chain, Andrew and Tim, and uh, in Indonesia, actually, on the ground with farmers. And, and definitely, um, just wanted to remark, I mean, it's um, the challenge, really, the big challenge is how to collect a lot of information, um, reliable information from the ground, from the farmer level, as Andrew mentioned. And the challenge is more even than the culture of the farmer. It's even bigger because there is very tough supply chains, right, of, uh, that, that works in the last 50 years with, uh, you know, a lot of um, chemicals companies, seedling companies, uh, traders. I mean, it's a complex supply chain. And, and I mean, it's not a question, it's more, it's, it's, I really think that we need to come together and we're actually coming together <laughs> with Wada and in Ghana and some projects uh, and around that in order to solve this issue, because uh, it's a very, very complex one, how to do the transformation from the ground, create this information from the ground. And it's more than just technology, right? It's people, it's, um, it's cultures, it's supply chains, and your technology will be very helpful for that. So I'm really looking forward to work with you on that. Um, yeah, just a small remark. It's a very complex problem. The technology alone will not solve it. Um, that's a, just a remark, and this is why we need to collaborate together. Well, um, I have stated, and uh, it, it, we're happy to work with anybody. This is not, uh, I think Felix put it best, this is not a confrontational space. Um, there have been so many people who have catalyst proposals who have said, look, would we help them build a, a proof of concept? I said, yes. Um, and I'd even do it for free. It, it, to me, you know, <laughs> my mission as a, a son of the soil is I would love to see uh, Africa, many countries in Africa actually undergo that technological leap. Uh, through the adoption of blockchain and cryptocurrency that enables trustless systems that help to eliminate things like corruption. And the only way that can happen is if it's done easily. If Tim has a solution that does that work, you can look at uh, Tim's pages. I've never commented. I don't have a problem with that. There are many, many low-code solutions, but ultimately, yeah. I would like the youth to be able to build applications to enhance the infrastructure in Africa in much the same way that the advent of cell phones made it possible to, uh, to gain greater adoption in the technological space. Because back in the day when I'd go to Ghana and you had to get something done with a landline, sometimes the landlines were, were just disconnected. So there is room for everybody, but our solution, this is what we know. And in my assessment, it's been very effective. And I think we can really execute change and help solve some problems uh, with our proposal as outlined. Uh, it's cool. I'm not sure where the noise is coming from. I was just uh, going through and muting everyone's uh, because there was a whole bunch of background noise. So I'm not quite sure where that's coming from. Okay, uh, cool. Well, um, I actually want to wrap everything up now because it's past 12 o'clock for me. And, you know, I have to go to sleep. Um, what I would like to do is, can I get a thumbs up, thumbs down if people would like to see a uh, no code, low code bake off? Uh, big thumbs up or big thumbs down and I can, uh, I can, we can arrange something in the, in the future for that. I'm certainly keen to see that sort of thing happening. Um, so, uh, what I would like you to do, Andrew, I've got Tim's email addresses ready. And if there's other people, other groups, like I wouldn't mind bringing in Marlo, even though that's kind of like a, a different point of view for financial contracts. And we could probably think about what's, uh, what sort of problem, if you have suggestions for a small problem that we can address in a uh, one hour session with about three, two or three different platforms, just to get a sense of it. Um, and just show what's possible. Show everyone what's possible with what we can do here. Okay, that's what I would like to, to do. And there's lots of opportunities and lots of different viewpoints on that. Uh, so with that, um, I would like to say thank you very much for attending. 
and uh, I'll call that a wrap uh, for, for this Eastern Town Hall. But thank you very much for all your time and energy and passion. I think it's uh, greatly appreciated. But I will su suggest that um, it's a, we are after the highest level of human collaboration. That's what we want to see here, right? And that means collaborating or, or what uh, sometimes may be referred to as co opetition cooperating and competing at the same time is going to be the best outcome for everyone. So with that, thank you very, very much. And um, uh, I'd love to talk to you um, at any time. So um, Andrew, if you flick me your email address or whatever, I can reach out to you with your, uh, um, uh, uh, about what we can do for a no code bake off in, a, in one or two Eastern Town Hall sessions later on. Um, but I think I'd love to see that sort of thing done. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Let's hook up when we're in Ghana, going on Ghana. Yeah, I won't be there, but <laughs> that would be good. And I'd encourage that. Um, right, oh, shoot, hold on. Sounds good. What's that? Happy weekend, everyone. Yes. Happy ah, weekend. A last point. A last point to mention. Maybe uh, we got some really amazing proposals presented, but they're also the challenge proposals, right? And yes. they are shaping the future of Fund, uh, not the future, the, the whole ecosystem of Fund Eight. So please vote for challenge proposals as well. They definitely deserve some attention as well. Uh, quite rightly, I was thinking about that earlier before. So thank you, Felix, for mentioning that because the challenges are actually incredibly important, but we tend to overlook them. So uh, thank you. Yeah, and if I may add, it was quite an interesting uh, discal format. Um, um, sorry, um, format for the session. It was quite interesting one of yeah. uh, presenting. Um, I liked it a lot. And then, thank you. Because it put everything to everyone together comparing to separate remarks. Felix, you maybe could consider uh, well, think about it. I'm sure yeah. you do. No passion, no point. Yeah. Sorry? No passion, no point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just okay. posted the link as well here in the live chat for some challenge proposals. So some which I think definitely deserve some votes. Have a look on it and that's it. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Well, and we'll see you Thank later. you very much. See you guys. Thanks, everyone. Nice seeing you. Have a great weekend. You too. Yeah.